okay? What? I was in this motherfucker B I P. Okay. You you live in Hollywood? Yes, I do. That's cool. You you live up in the Hollywood Hills? No, I do not. Sometimes I visit. I got friends everywhere. Hollywood, Baldwin Hills, Hollywood Hills, Ladera Hills, wherever you want to say, I got friends everywhere, okay? I'm in this motherfucker, V-I-P. What's up, girl? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Girl, you beautiful. You're beautiful. That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. Uh, <laughs> dude come on, dude. Let's get out of here now. It's Trying. Fresh kid turned rotten. I can't believe how naive that I've gotten. Over the years, seems like I'm getting dumber. Reminiscing to a time when I was younger with a hunger. Full of dreams, determination, self esteem. But now it seems they hesitate to be on my team. You know the routine. When you win and they grant it, all up in your face like they was with you from the beginning. But on the flip side, when you watch them like a real tie, fools clown by how you slipped and let shit slide. Beside the fact, my voice is whack. Clowns just running around, talk about a smoke crack. Ain't got no homies that got my back. Yeah, I'm a brother, but sometimes I don't feel black. Who am I kidding? Who am I fooling when they be like, What's up, fat lip? And I say, Cool. I think I got signed when I was 22 to the label. But all before then, during that time when we was trying to get signed and everything like that, we was, that's all we was doing was clubbing, dancing. Not clubbing, like, you know, getting drinks at the bar. It was, it was like we was clubbing, dancing, and that was our whole environment, music and whatever. Before you know, we even knew how to. We was fans mostly of the of the beats and the, and the music and all that. We just danced to like uh, like craft work type of shit, and then that was like the whole scene. But like the fast music, like like 120 beats per minute. I like the girl. You know, like, and then I'd have to demonstrate the dances outside the car, but, you know, and that's the way you got girls, too. Shit like that, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, it would be like groups of us, you know what I'm saying? Like four or four, five of us, and then we have little routines. We had a dance called the Freddy Krueger. Shit like that. It was fun, man. It was, it was fun. Mine, mine. What? Let me use it. I just want to use it. Yeah. Can I use it? Yeah. Okay, flash. Alright, let's do this. Yeah. What? You have to make it a movie or what? What channel? What channel? MTV? MTV? Yeah, MTV. Not even? Yeah. What time? Not like maybe in like a month or two. You have a posse? Yeah. You have a posse? Well, I used to have a posse. My posse used to be a um, far side posse. Have you ever yeah. met Puff Daddy? Yeah. <laughs> Send yeah. us an autograph. A Puff Daddy? Yeah, I could. I could yeah, I could do that. I think I can look that up. started, the big influence was Big Daddy Kane. That's, you know, I, I mean, I used to like listen to, and then De La Soul's, you know, first album, I just used to listen to it like, I used to, <laughs> I used to listen to it like all night. I had one of those, uh, t you know, tape players that kept going all around and around or whatever. I used to listen to it like it was a teddy bear. I used to hold it and listen to it all night. 
You ever heard of freestyle yeah. fellowship? Yeah. I got introduced to freestyling like in in ninety one. One of the kids in freestyle fellowship, Peace, he was the first one I heard freestyle and I couldn't believe it. It wasn't like he was like, um and um um he was doing it like it was prepared, put it like that, and it was just that was amazing. And that's what really drove me into taking you know, that hip, that culture seriously, because it was serious. What he was doing was, you know, it was real. It was like, i never seen nobody do that before. That was, that was in, very intelligent to me. When did you guys first start playing together? With the uh, far side? Yeah. Like, uh, 91? Even before we got signed, we was together, like, we lived together in an apartment like this, some, you know, similar to this. Getting high and listening to jazz and freestyling and MCs and dancing. That's what it was all about. That was it. I mean, you know, you can only you can't live that lifestyle forever. You know, we was younger than also. You know, we was early twenties like that. So in ninety what ninety one, you guys started getting together. In ninety two, you put out Bizarre Ride. Yeah, Bizarre Ride. Then we toured a lot. You know what I'm saying? We toured a lot. Kind of like after the album, like maybe like three years after the album. That's when we did most of the touring for some reason. And the album went gold like four years later. Really? Yeah. The best thing about what we was doing back then was getting pussy and, and making money. Because like we didn't care about the shows. We would just do shows and then look for the girl. Because like when you're on tour and touring and shit, it's like, like the world is just, it's just, you know, you're not thinking about shit, but having fun. You're not thinking about shit. It's like in your mind, you're success. And that's where record companies get people, because you getting pampered, and you're not thinking about nothing else, except the immediate luxuries you got. You're not thinking about, like, oh, like the, like, like the, the success might go away. <clears throat> nah, you don't think that, because everybody's, it don't look like it's about to go away. So even when Lab Cabin didn't blow up, we did, we was touring. Be Real bought us on the tour. We did the Lollapalooza shit. No matter what, we was always doing shows. So that right there is gonna make you feel like you're doing something right. Cause you're getting cash that night, you're getting thousands that night. So it's like, what, what? What's somebody gonna tell me? It's like, what? The whole thing, what we was about, everything that we was about started to kind of change. You know, we started making money and stuff, which is cool. We, you know, having girls, which was great. But, you know, after a while, it got kind of like, it was redundant. You know, we was going, and then the shows got a little different. We was doing raves and shit like that. We got, you know, less and less, I mean, further and further away from hip hop, kind of. And it's like, um, you know, I got tired of it. I was just looking for a new direction, just in life in general. I was just doing all type of little things, you know, experimenting my experimental stages, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's when I got, that's when I lost myself. That's when I lost, like, who I was, really. Even at my most hip-hop peak, I thought I was somebody that I actually wasn't. That's the trip part about it. Because I thought I was real, like, hip-hop, and I really was jock in New York, and that's because that's where all my influences came from. So anything that wasn't hip-hop, New York style, I was dissing. As far as the far side, I was thinking they was whack and shit like that. But in a, in, a, in a certain respect, they was being themselves. No matter how whack it seemed to me, like they, was, they was being truer than I was. Like Trey was singing and shit like that because that's what he wanted to do. And he was expressing himself the way he knew how. But I'm like, that's whack because nobody else is doing it. Wu-Tang isn't doing it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's not what I know about hip-hop, so that's whack. You know what I'm saying? So they got tired of me too. So it's like, I remember the day too, they came to my house and they never came to my apartment before. You know what I'm saying? They called me up, yo, look, we all coming over. And then I was like, all right. And then I knew, I knew it was something, you know, weird. Cause they never, you know, all three of them never came. You know, we never really, never really kicked it after we started going on tour. Everybody just went, they separated. So they came over, I knew it was something, you know, so. That was it right there. That was like, uh, you know, you should do your own solo album. Like, all right. That was that.
I've definitely dropped out the spotlight to the point where people saw me on the bus. At the bus stop, like, you know what I'm saying? And what they say? They like in shock, because people's perception of, you know, the, inter the entertainers. They saw me on videos everywhere. They see me everywhere. I'm fat lip from the far side. Saw me on TV, MTV, whatever. I'm on the bus. They're like, what are you doing on the bus? I don't understand. You know what I'm saying? That's a lesson for them right there. I forgot I'm talking with fucking... I forgot I'm talking in a clown suit. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> Yeah, I'm in for the party. I'm in for the party. Oh. Yeah, it's a party at 7... 7.30. Okay. They ordered a clown. Yeah. What are you talking about? Huh? I came all the way from San Bernardino. Okay, so are you, I'm, you're not playing with me, right? Go ahead and just show me, you know. Like if I came from San Bernardino, I'm gonna do something. Can I perform for you? <laughs> are you guys ready to have some fun? <laughs> We're gonna have some fun right now. That's part of the show. That's what I didn't know that a lot of rappers was doing. They was creating images. Because when you would look at it like, that's a real person, it's like, damn, I'm a buster. Like, this nigga is killing motherfuckers every day and like, you know what I'm saying, just, he got bitches and, you know what I'm saying, he's pimping and he's selling drugs and he rapping too. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I'm a, you know, I got to look up to this guy right here. You know what I'm saying? Anyone in particular? Biggie. I said Biggie. Biggie Smalls, because when I heard his album, it was, it was incredible. From the skits to every verse, I believed completely. So it was a relief to find out that he was, he was really just a poet with a, with a great imagination. So when I find out these artists that I respect aren't real killers, it was a relief. Like, okay, they just, I see the game, you know. It's entertainment. I look at, I listen to his record just like I, I watch an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. Entertainment. It's showtime. <laughs> and so basically Revenge of the Nerd is, you know, returning to to the things, you know, the real me. You know what I'm saying? Cause it was the circumstances that made me think I was somebody else. I think, hey, basically, you know what I'm saying? See, what is, it's a trip about, about just art in general, because your art is a reflection of who you are and all the experiences that you've, all the things that you've experienced throughout your whole life. So, you know, what's up, Fat Lip is really, the, you know, that's what I know. Lyrically, just everything that, that's on that song, I've thought. Feeling downtrodden, fresh kid turned rotten. You know, that, like, that type of thing, like, you know, I can't believe how naive that I've gotten. Over the years, seems like I'm getting dumber. Reminiscing to a time when I was younger, with a hunger. You know, just when I was, you know, you know, I had a little more vitality and, you know, it's just like when you get older, you know, when you're younger, you don't care about a lot of things, you know, because you got the future ahead of you. But, then, you know, there's at a certain age that you reach and it's like, wow, maybe I am going to be, you know, just stupid for the rest of my life or maybe I'm not going to really achieve all the crazy, wild dreams that I had, you know? Like the more you, the, yeah, the older you get, you know, Seems like the less chances you have at it. When you're young, it's like the world is just, it's just open for you, you know? Going around younger kids to do it also, you know? You're around kids that, you know, are more free-spirited and then you 
reminisce to a time when you used to be that way and it makes you realize how much you've changed and how much the world has just gotten to you and just I make myself sick, get on my own nerve, insecure, immature, grown up, grown up nerd. Has been MC on a label that's unstable. <laughs> chopping Blakey on the tank. You know, I was chopping it up for a while. You know, I got into that one a while, the cocaine and shit, thought it was hip. And I was bragging about it, you know, cause I was like, yeah, that's the shit. I'm just bragging about it. To who? To Imani and shit. Everybody, I was just bragging about it. You know, that was cocaine. Like, I did cocaine. Like, yeah, that was, you know. But, uh. And what, and is, that, is that part of why they, you got kicked out? Or? Yeah, I think so. That was, you know, like, I think that was like the, the, the straw. I think the same month I tried ecstasy for the first time, shit like that. So I was like, fuck it, you know. Did you get into ecstasy too? Oh yeah, that was my shit. I used to love ecstasy. I wouldn't do that no more, but I'm just saying, I used to like, I, I really thought ecstasy was the answer to every problem. How come, like, what kind of experiences would you have? Like, With ecstasy? Yeah. Oh, it was just a beautiful experience. It was all beautiful. I felt great. Like, my body felt relaxed. My mind was relaxed. It was like, I had the freedom to think anything I wanted to. It was it was like a vacation from myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was great. It was, it was beautiful. I went through a real serious depression, a period of depression, and, and um, you know that's just you know the song basically is narrating that whole period. You know, I don't know. Maybe it has something to do with smoking weed. I stopped smoking weed a while back, and I think. But before I stopped, I was smoking for like 10 years or something, like, you know, every day. And I actually, I think that has a lot to have to do with it. Cause I was, I was depressed, I was very depressed. I kind of thought that was the thing that made me a hip hopper and a musician and shit like that too. So that's why I kept smoking it. Cause you could, like, cause like you wouldn't, didn't think you'd be able to be creative if you weren't depressed? Well, I just associated those two things together, music and drugs. So I thought, yeah, I thought like if I wasn't high, you know, something would be missing. Like I'm not doing it right or something. Like, or I have to feel high and and maybe through my depression, that's when I'll write a masterpiece and shit like that. Every time I smoked or it seemed like I would just have these crazy mixed up thoughts and, you know, just, I don't know. It was like paranoia, fear, and just crazy thoughts. I used to be, I don't know, like, if I would meet a girl, I used to be suspicious whether or not she worked for the government, shit like that, just, I don't know, unnecessary concerns, basically. You can make a left right here. I go out like a sucker almost every day. In the back of your mind, you're probably thinking I was gay. But no, nah, I'm just a bitch-ass nigga, the type to get jacked if I was a rich-ass nigga. Like, I think about if someone thought I was gay. Like, I would really be worried about do people think I'm gay or, you know what I'm saying? Why would they think you were gay? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, well, it had something to do with one time. I, oh, this is where it started. One time I went out with a transvestite. I didn't know it was a transvestite. I swear to God. I didn't know it was a transvestite, right? Right. Um, I met this girl on Crenshaw. Uh-huh. And, you know, she looked good. She was, you know, Filipino. And I was rolling with my boy, Daniel. I didn't have on no shoes because he just picked me up from the house, you know. So he said, let's roll on Crenshaw. You know, that was during the time where everybody was rolling. You know, it was a meeting spot, cruising and everything, right? So I seen these girls going in the opposite direction. And I'm like, yo, yo, you know, uh, follow them. So we follow them. I stay in the car because I don't have no shoes when we pull them over. Tell that one I want a number. He came back, he said, uh, she wants your number. I'm like, cool. Gave him my number. So I'm like looking at him from a distance, right? Cause I'm still in the car and they right behind me. My mother kind of suspected something because she had a deep voice, you know? So not, she was like, who's that Talisa calling you on the phone all the time, right? I'm like, oh, come on, Maj, that's, that's just her accent, right? So we go out. You know, and she's telling me that she's shy, right? So when I brought her over to my friend's house to show her off, because I thought she looked real good, she's like, 
you know, I, I'm bringing my friends to the car, like, yeah, this is my girl, blah, 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 introducing her, and she's in the rearview mirror putting on her makeup, like, trying to hide her face, and I'm thinking that's because she's shy. So, anyway, we get to the beach, we're kissing, all right? We're kissing and doing all type of things, fondling and everything. So she's grabbing me on my ass, and, you know, I'm thinking that it's on, you know, because just, you know, the way it's going down. So I go for the titties, and then she moves my hand, you know, and then I go for down there, and then she's moving my hand. So then, so then, <laughs> you know, this is some Jerry Springer shit, but, hey, it happened. It happened. She sucked my dick. Suck my dick. That's for real. Okay? Suck my dick. So I'm like, okay, you suck my dick. Let's go in the back. Let's get in the let's get in the car. Let's, I mean, let's go in the back, you know, back seat. She's like, no. I'm like, what do you mean, no? You just, you know, I'm like, she just sucked my dick. What what is that's it? You're not you gonna suck my dick and you're not gonna even let me touch your titties? I'm like, come on. So then something just happened. I just started looking at his feet. Start looking at the hair. I mean, like, it's like the makeup, because we was at the beach and the makeup was kind of like wearing down. And then I didn't really want to think it because I was thinking, nah, no, nah, that couldn't be because I was high. So, you know, you never know. And I'm high and I'm thinking, I'm not going to ask this girl if she's actually a man because, you know, that would be rude because I'm still thinking it's a girl. So we got, by the time we get to the gas station, <clears throat> I'm trying to fill up. I'm like, all right, fuck this. She's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, you don't know what's wrong? I'm looking at dead in your eye. You don't know what's wrong? You don't know what's wrong? She's like, no, what, what? And I pulled up his shirt. And I didn't even pull it up all the way to the top. I just pulled it up. I just could see his stomach. I just like, ugh. Oh. I just fell out to the ground on my knees and just started crying. Just like, I couldn't believe it. So it was like a nightmare. It was like a nightmare. And then I got him, I took him in the alley, got him up against the wall, shit. I was like, you motherfucker. I was like, how can you do this shit? You know I'm not gay, shit like that. I'm like, you know I wasn't gay? What the fuck? You changed my life forever, you know what I'm saying? I, I was fucked up that you did that to me. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like crying like a real girl. So I'm like, ah, right, fuck it. And then he's like, most guys didn't mind. I'm like, oh my God, most guys, this motherfucker is, you know what I'm saying? He does this all the time. So then I ended up, well, let's make a long story shorter. I ended up socking him in the mouth because he kept crying and shit. So now he's bleeding and got makeup and blood and shit looking just crazy. You know what I'm saying? And then now I think, now that I was looking at him, I'm like, oh shit, I should have known. His hair was this short. You know, he was like just grown. And then the feet was big, hands are big. He had on jeans and a jacket. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, so I just took him home after that. And I'm like, man, if I ever see you again, if you ever tell anybody I'm gonna fucking kill you, I know where you live, all that shit. It's like, all right, and that was the end of it. I ended up telling people the story, but I've always edited that part out. Cause that was just too, some shit. You know, a man That's sucked bad. my dick, all right? A <laughs> man sucking my dick. And that's how I found out. Because anybody that sucks your dick is going to let you at least touch your titties. And if, if they don't, that's just weird. Now, here well, yeah, I, I wrote about it on the first album, on the old shit. You know what I'm saying? But it was a sense how's, edited how, version. How's the verse going in, in, in One shit. fine summertime, Sunday evening, Crenshaw Boulevard was in full swing. Perfect example of how looks can be deceiving. Rolled up in what I thought was a pretty young thing. Rolling in the purple Samurai Suzuki. Dookie Braids was an A to the sex appeal. Dude, she was dope. Man, real dope on the real. But anyway, I went toot toot. She said, hey, beep, beep. The next day, rolled down to the beach, deuce deep. Me and my new Crenshaw Cute. Chilling on the beach and now she's rubbing on my booty. Suck, suck, sucking on my neck like Dracula, but it wasn't all that spectacular. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wait, wait, how did it go after that? But it wasn't all that spectacular. Why? Because I tried to touch upon a taste nitty. Then she'd be like, quit, hee hee, bitch was fronting. Then I said something. I forgot what bitch was running. Then I said, but I didn't say nothing. Then all of a sudden, as if someone pushed the button, I had a funny feeling like something was real wrong. Looked at her shoes and her feet was real long. Then it hit me. 
Oh, please, God, no. Don't let this hoe turn out to be uh, John Doe. He pulled a fast one on me. Yo, I guess that's one of those things that make you go, shit. <laughs> From that on, I was always like, damn, just, you know, it, I didn't know what people thought of me and things like that. And it's, it's, it was weird, so. Did you ever think about retiring from rap, though? Every day. <laughs> With the rap thing, you know, I think I've ran my course. You know, it's just, you know, younger kids coming in, and it's just not the same. You know, I had my time, basically, I think, you know. And, uh... <clears throat> You know, I would quit, you know what I'm saying? But what else What else am I gonna do? What, am I gonna be a lawyer? Am I gonna go to, you know, med medical school now? Nah, I gotta rap, no matter what. I might as well be holding a sign on the corner that says, we'll rap for food, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Did you ever have to get another job? Have you had to work have you, to make money? Not yet, but it's coming. I can feel it. Not yet, but it's coming. It's around the corner. I'm getting prepared. I, you know, I'm getting prepared. I got several kids. You know, I got about six kids. You know what I'm saying? You know, I came to the conclusion. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. So, you know, if anybody sees sees me up at, you know, Burger King, whatever, asking them to take their order. Don't act surprised, cause you know, all of us rappers out here on the videos ain't millionaires, you know. You do have, you got six kids? <laughs> nah. <laughs> I was believing it. <laughs> nah. Yeah. Now in America. Wait, no, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, Tyler, not yet. Oh! Feeling down, trying, fresh kid turn rotten. I can't believe how naive that I've gotten. Over the years, seems like I'm getting dumber. Reminiscing to a time when I was younger with a hunker. Full of dreams, determination, self-esteem. But now it seems they hesitate to be on my team. You know the routine when you win and they grin it. All up in your face like they was with you from the beginning. But on the flip side, when you watch them like a real tie, fools climb by, you slipped and let shit slide. Beside the fact, my voice is whack. Clowns is running around, talking about a smoke crack. Ain't got no homies that got my back. Yeah, I'm a brother, but sometimes I don't feel black. My girl is white, my game ain't tight. Niggas who ain't seen me in a while be like, dude, you alright? Who am I kidding? Who am I fooling when they be like, what's up, fat lip? And I say, coolin'. Who am I kidding? Who am I fooling when they be like, what's up, fat lip? And I say, coolin'. Who am I kidding? Who am I fooling when they be like, what's up, fat lip? And I say, coolin'. Who am I kidding? Who am I fooling when they be like, Like a sucker almost every day In the back of your mind You probably thinking I was gay But nah, I'm just a bitch ass nigga The type to get jacked if I was a rich ass nigga See, I've been a loser just about of my life Type to trying to turn a hoe to a housewife What do you expect? I give respect And feel for a hoe, niggas keep in check I'm far from hard, emotionally scarred On Pico Boulevard, I was regarded as a retard I make myself sick Get on my own nerve, immature, insecure, grown up nerd. Half pin MC on a label that's unstable. Chopping bliggy on the table. Who am I kidding? Who am I fooling when they be like, What's up, fat lip? And I say, Coolin'. Who am I kidding? Who am I fooling when they be like, What's up, fat lip? And I say, Coolin'. Who am I kidding? Who am I fooling when they be like, What's up, fat lip? And I say, Coolin'. Who am I kidding? Who am I fooling when they be like, What's up, fat uh. lip?
I said a hip hop, a hippy to the hippy. Here comes the lip with the dibby dibby dibby. Hip hop, a hippy to the hippy. Here comes the lip with the dibby dibby dibby. Hip hop, a hippy to the hippy. Here comes the lip with the dibby dibby dibby. Hip hop, a hippy to the hippy. Here comes the lip, y'all, y'all. My flow's thorough, I shine like Jamal Burrow You at my show saying, yo, where my girl go? She backstage, lying by the A, back and younger Gave me the home phone, 2 a.m. the page number Called once, never called back No time for all that Trying to pack pockets like your ball and cat I just rap and got jack to fall back on Early bird pimp, crack a dawn, get my Mac on I do this for the backpackers and the slackers The nerdy, no pussy having computer hackers Spike Jones affiliate doing silly shit. 
in the video, but the hoes still feeling it. Who's an idiot, missing what the facts is. Missing the point like a bald headed cactus. The rhymes are right in sight, applause. The tightest MC is me, Jay Z, and Nas. In that order, according to your far side supporters, put them broken up to borrow a quarter. Hungry like a third world country across the border. Uh, 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 I said, hey, hop, hop, a hippie to the hippie. Here comes the left with the dibby, dibby, dibby. Hip, hop, a hippie to the hippie. Here comes the left with the dibby, dibby, dibby. Hip, hop, a hippie to the hippie. Here comes the left with the dibby, dibby, dibby. Hip, hop, a hippie to the hippie. Here comes the left, y'all, y'all. My hip hop make a cyclops head bop. Drop a beat, break it down like a chop shop. I don't stop on top of my game, refuse to flop. Remember when it was lame to go pop? I need a hit like a bass head wearing a shirt that don't fit. Like a baby on it. The flow you spit don't phase me one bit. The black Brad Pitt, heart throb, smart enough to rob banks with a corn on the cob. Uh. I do the job with no pride. I flee the cops and get robbed from the mob. It's a revive, I got street credibility. Paid my dues here, baby, so don't bill me. Charge to the game. What's my name? Ask me again and I'ma tell you the same. I said a hip hop, a hippie to the hippie. Here comes the left with the dibby, dibby, dibby. Hip hop, a hippie to the hippie. Here comes the left with the dibby, dibby, dibby. Hip hop, a hippie to the hippie. Here comes the left with the dibby, dibby, dibby. Hip hop, a hippie to the hippie. Here comes the left. Yo, yo, yo. From Carson to Colorado, I ride full throttle. Shifted as no vodka inside the bottle. Always in the club, rubbing up on a model. Philosophical to the lights of Aristotle. Never one to follow any trends and fads. Forever in the lab with a pen and pad. Uh, that's all I ever had, not a high school grad. But I still spend mad cash in Trinidad. Scuba diving Cuba, hang gliding Hades. Living life like Richard Pryor in the 80s. Straight crazy. Yeah. Uh. I said a hip hop, a hippie to the hippie. Here comes the left with the dibby dibby dibby. Hip hop, a hippie to the hippie. Here comes the left with the dibby dibby dibby. Hip hop, a hippie to the hippie. Here comes the left with the dibby dibby dibby. Hip hop, a hippie to the hippie. Here comes the left, y'all, y'all, y'all. Till infinity, that bitch. It ain't easy. We gon' make it. Yeah. Uh. Check it out. Uh. Hey, crap. the blues ain't your bad news you can trip if you choose while i sip booze on a seven day cruise in louis vuitton shoes with floozies by the dudes the good life talking about the good life give it up for a little while then go to the hood to get the good wife and settle down but for now i'm studying down refuse to allow myself to devour like when i was sniffing pals still got trials and tribulations refinement from cultivation takes patience i'm waiting paper chasing to get a place like Politics and innovation, business relations Built the empire from the underground Then retire Who said I was on crack? You the motherfucking liar See me in the trench coat but miss the joke So fuck the hoax My mission is this Get in position to assist my folks Huh? Get in position to assist my mother My, my mother and my auntie and my uncle My folks You know? Trying to 
dance slow, wicked fly flow. Intimate verses that hit surface with quick service, but never nervous in this big circus. A quick purchase of green foliage and clean bowl hits. Redeems focus when this seems hopeless. Supreme dopeness on plain paper for you plan rapers. This landscape is papers, a race of this sandpaper. Don't try to fan papers, you caught this horn slot. Reform start the poems you perform, be pure slop. For sure, shout out handcuffer. Word up of a heard enough of the bullshit. You nerd suck up out the back gate. The big so pregnant, we black date. Get your facts straight. We stack papes and crack plates over wax snakes who pack hate. They lack faith. While tuna and fat lip put you in a relaxed state like that. Day to day, babe. What you gon' do? When I'm up in the mix, can't predict my art shit and get the top of the charts. But my heart's in the right place, nice head space. Slow pace from the Buddha, but not the base. Not a moment to waste. 33, no degree of GD. My mind's free. I learn when I'm being taught. I see how the battles fall. It's opposite of how I thought. I woke up, opened my eyes up, rise up, wise up to the gang. Time to change the name, Eddie Crap. Coming with different shit, Eddie Crap. Write it down, niggas. See the reverse significance. It's terrific oh. when I'm on top of my game. Specifically speaking, oh. the way I be freaking my slang. Oh. Give me the moo moo, the poo poo, and the mic, and I'm creeps. Fat lips, oh. squeaky clean, don't stop, don't cease. Oh. Day to day, baby, what you call? 